Hey cats, Ed Primex Bud here. Today I've got a longer run insight for you into that mysterious and somewhat misunderstood shoe, the Nike Zoomfly 5. Can I work out the puzzle? Probably not. Thanks for joining me on the channel cats, it's always appreciated. Help us to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell below for notifications and when we drop those new videos for you. Really helps out too in terms of that YouTube algorithm. If you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. Help me to bring some more shoes in for review as well on an ad hoc basis by supporting the channel with a super thanks. Hit that button below. I think it's like a heart and a dollar sign or something like that. It really does help us out, guys. We appreciate it very much. In on the test blocks today, the Zoomfly 5 for a longer run, 10.3 miles today or 16.6 .6 kilometers on a different route to my normal selection and on a Saturday as well. What's that all about? A long run on a Saturday. It seems like you can do them on any day you like. Hitting about 8 minutes 14 seconds per mile average, which is about 5 minutes 7 per kilometer. There's a reasonable dollop of elevation on there today as well. And I kept the heart rate nice and low, around 123 beats per minute. Barely even alive. Aside from the climbs and a few strides that I threw in later into the run. Good to get a little pace into the run later. I was starting to get a little bit bored, I suppose. It's all right running slowly, but it's nice to get a bit of adrenaline going and run fast. It really was at the end. I did enjoy it. I got to learn to run some slower pace miles though, guys. Even as I'm getting a little bit older, I think it is beneficial to try and do some longer, slow runs to build up that endurance. I know I can stay on my feet for hours at a time playing gigs and stuff, but running's a little bit different. Certainly the watcher is very impressed with me though, helping to boost my aerobic base on today's run. I think it adjusted my heart rate as well, my max heart rate or something. So what mysteries lie in those little boxes that we put on our wrists. It will just be an easy three miles tomorrow to take me up to 40 miles for the week. So really happy with that. No injuries, touch wood. So how did the Zoomfly 5 work out on today's run? Let's get to it. Even very early on today, it was warm, humid and muggy. And I found the upper worked out really well. Nice and breathable. I think that's down to how thin it is, really. There isn't much of it there. I mean, there's thinner uppers out there, but I think the fact that this one hasn't got a gusset around the tongue, I think that really helps out in terms of breathability. I mean, most of the weight of this shoe is really in the midsole on the outsole. The upper's just there to hold it onto your foot. Lockdown really easily achieved this morning. I don't really think I was awake, actually, as half asleep sort of put my foot into the shoe tightened it up laced it and that was it i didn't think about it again it's that easy it stayed consistent across the run as well it wasn't one of these shoes that varies where you have to stop after a mile and re-tighten it i got it pretty much spot on i think that's down to some of the padding actually that you got in the tongue there it's ample i am enjoying the lower profile that we get in the zoom fly five this time around the actual profile around the ankle area is really great it's quite low it doesn't really feel like it's there most of the time i haven't had any issues either with the width of the shoe i think it's going to be one that's quite variable it's quite a range there so if you've got a wider foot i think it will be accommodating if you've got a narrower foot it doesn't feel like you're having to cinch the upper materials together too much no rubbing or discomfort and the shoe worked really well in terms of the upper today i mean the upper of the zoom fly 4 was terrible so this is actually a really big improvement for me in this model of the shoe i'd suggest it hasn't got quite the comfort of the zoom fly flying it i mean that was containing but also very conforming i suppose to the shape of your foot but you can't have it all i guess moving on a midsole now so intentional today to take this on a sort of longer slower run can it handle it i know that it can work at pace very well i've tried that out already with some 400 and 800 meter reps in previous runs so does it suit the long and slow run well in a word yes it does you can do that in it i'm not sure it's the intended use case but it worked okay but i don't think it's going to be for everybody in terms of the firmer nature of the shoe as a sustained lower paced model the shoe actually felt quite good reasonably smooth once i'd gotten into my stride the midsole material here is softening up that sro2 stuff it kind of encapsulates the zoom x scraps that we've got in the midsole but don't expect the squash here that you get in the Invincible Run or the Alpha Fly or the Vaporfly, the Streak Fly. You're just not going to get that here. 
even with a Zoom X crushed insole as well within the Zoom Fly 5, it isn't that level of squash. Whether the actual forgiving properties of the Zoom X will transfer across in this kind of implementation, I don't know. That remains to be seen, really. I know I've run 10 miles today, I'm going to say that doesn't have the same forgiving feel as if I'd run 10 miles in like the Alpha Fly Next Percent 2 for example. I mean the Vomero 16's got a similar sort of setup here but with fresh Zoom X that feels less rigid and more forgiving perhaps at those slower speeds. Just a bit more flexible and usable perhaps on a more regular basis than this one. I've got to say it wasn't uncomfortable but then again you see even at faster paces it feels firm it feels okay then, but probably not my choice. That'd be the speed three right now. That just does everything. It's just like odd and perplexing really that Nike have gone down this route when Saucony have got that fantastic shoe everybody loves. Well, not everybody, but almost everyone. The speed has always been very light and nimble, rigid to a point, not as rigid as the Zoom Fly 5, but it's just so much more enjoyable to run in. Just a little bit more engaging perhaps. Doesn't feel as if it's controlling what you're doing quite as much as the Zoom Fly 5 does. I'm not sure they've used the Zoom X in this shoe for performance. I think it's kind of been put there so they can stick Zoom X on the side and people might buy it. It's more an imitation of that type of foam rather than the real thing. I guess a little bit like where you get certain Air Jordans and they've got leather on the outside and that leather's covered in some sort of plastic as well. Whereas you get other pairs that are more sought after perhaps, which are of a much higher leather grade. I mean, if you're buying the Zoom Fly 5 for some type of taste of what the Vaporfly or the Alpha Fly might be like, well, dream on. It's just not going to be like that. You're going to be unsatisfied as the guy that walks into a burger place and looks at one of the pictures and picks that burger and then is presented something very different on his plate. By the time I did some of those strides later in the run it did feel a little bit like I had a very overweight cat attached to my foot. You felt like there was a lot of weight swinging around there and for a stick thin man like me that's not really something I would want towards the end of a half marathon or a marathon. Outsole now. How's it shaping up? Well not the best I suppose. There is a little bit of wear here in the midfoot and certainly on the lateral edge of the heel and after you know what 40 miles I think it is now I've got in these maybe slightly more I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean the traction's great on road on tarmac on pavement it is perhaps one of the more noisy shoes that you could pick up to run on those types of terrain. It's odd how many outsole patterns that Nike have tried out over the last few years there's been different ones in the Pegasus, the Invincible Run, the Streak Fly. I think the only two that have got any similarity really are the Alpha Fly Next Percent and then also the Tempo Next Percent. I mean, there's even a new one in the Alpha Fly Next Percent too, isn't it? Fortunately, this pattern isn't picking up too much debris. You haven't got too many hitchhikers there that you're taking on board over your long run. Bone dry conditions during June and July so far. Not really any opportunity to take this one out in the wet, so I can't comment on that thus far. Fine so far, but again, I'm a bit perturbed by the early wear. Is this going to be another pattern that Nike have designed and implemented that they just dump after, you know, one or two different iterations of the shoe? We've seen that many times in the past, only time will tell. But it was all right today, though. No slipping around. So a okay middle of the road, mediocre perhaps, performance on the long run today for the Zoom Fly 5. If I was to run it at a faster pace, would I feel any better? I don't think I would. Just seems like a very odd choice here to implement the foam in this manner, considering how successful Saucony have been with the Endorphin Speed 3. Let me know your thoughts and opinions for shoes for the longer run down in the comments. Musical interlude today comes from Tractor Ted. If you're a parent, you may well have encountered Tractor Ted already. He has a multitude of extremely hard to forget songs that can entertain your young people. One song of that ilk is the Munchy Crunchy Carrot Harvester song. Now I ran around today, got 10 miles, and the only thing that I could hear in my head was this song, just going round and around and around. 
I'm a Happy Harvester is also another great one to uh, drive yourself completely insane with. I think my favourite is probably the Combine song. Being uh, somebody from Somerset, I particularly like Combine Harvesters, one of my favourite agricultural machines. It's hard to dislike the Tractor Ted series, really. It's sort of teaching kids about, you know, where some of these things are coming from, how some of these processes are done, you know, getting milk and you know, harvesting certain items from the fields. I mean, the one where they harvest the blackberries is absolutely amazing. I couldn't believe it. It's incredible. I always wondered how they'd done it. You know, 43 years and you're still learning. Go and check out some of the fantastic songs from Tractor Ted. Let's go to the farm with Tractor Ted. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. We're rapidly approaching 30,000 subs. Help us to get there. You could be the one by hitting that subscribe button and also clicking the bell below for notifications when we roll them out for you. Hit that like button and also share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.